Hi there, Camille. Um, I was just wondering, could you tell us a little bit about what is the South End in transition allotment? Um, it's a, a small plot uh, uh, which we rent from the council on a bigger allotment site, and uh, it's the first uh, practical project which we've undertaken uh, as uh, South End in transition. Um, it got us together, got us out, and uh, helped us involve uh, the community, um, who, who which likes to do practical things and. Uh, um, since uh, uh, we set it up, it's been growing. We took on uh, two more plots. Um, yeah, very enjoyable. Okay, thank you. Um, I was wondering, could you tell us a little bit about um, what were your kind of motivations or aims? What was the reason you set the plot up in the first place? Uh, well, f food is an important part of transition, and um, um, all of the uh, core group uh, seems to be uh, very keen and involved in, in food, and uh, one of the principles is let it go where it wants to go and so we followed the energy mm -hmm. um, and uh, as it happened there was some uh, free plots for a year available so we thought yeah let's let's take one on and see how we gel as mm -hmm. a group working regularly um, and uh, see if we want to take it bigger very scale very organically we've grown it that way great thank you and so what kind of information did you need to kind of gather beforehand or before you set the project up, both in terms of maybe the land itself and kind of stuff around people, maybe the social, social landscape, if you like. Yeah, so ha having done my um, uh, permaculture course, um, I had in, in my mind the SADIM uh, framework uh, from the outset, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I've also combined it with uh, uh, coaching methodology called GoMad, uh, which, which uh, provides some additional tools. Um, and I've used uh, SADIM in, in two ways. Uh, one which was uh, the land, uh, uh, mm -hmm. design of the land, uh, but uh, at the same time we were looking at uh, designing our organization, um, deciding what it will be, uh, so use it in both ways. When thinking about surveying um, uh, in regards to creating an organization, we wanted to understand our own energy levels and skills, um, mm -hmm. experiences of uh, running a type of organization, but also what's out there. So uh, uh, one of us uh, was assigned the task of uh, looking through different organizational models mm -hmm. and we decided initially on, on criteria uh, ease of setup, ease of maintenance, uh, potential positives, negatives uh, using really Edward de Bono's positive, negative, interesting kind of framework. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some, some of us thought about maybe a community interest company or a social enterprise, mm -hmm. uh, but from, from uh, my experience of working in two charities, I found that a small charity under 5,000 was the best initial mm. uh, 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 platform mm -hmm. because it offered us um, the access to an account and mm -hmm. gave us initial framework of uh, uh, documents which we could use and have some structure around our activity. We mm -hmm. could be recognized by others, uh, seem, seem to be safe and build a reputation, but we wouldn't have too many overheads because we mm. wouldn't have to be audited. Uh, the treasurer obviously would have to keep accounts, but it, it was all, uh, the purpose wasn't to build an organization, the purpose was for the organization to support mm. our aims, to reach more mm. people, to direct uh, you know, funds to the projects uh, which we think can create resilience locally. So that's why, that's the survey bit. Uh, Okay. Uh, we we uh, used uh, uh, in deciding on the type of organisation to go with. Great, thank you. And were there any particular challenges around the project? Uh, well, we are uh, busy in our day-to-day -day lives, uh, so um, we've been meeting on the uh, weekends and evenings, uh, mm -hmm. so, so there is a lot of space in between. Um, uh, which which uh, means to, uh, it was easy to get distracted mm -hmm. um, or, or lose track of things, lose motivation. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, we've be, be, we designed uh, things from the outset uh, to have regular meetings, uh, mm -hmm. uh, designed lots of social opportunities in the meetings. Uh, we designed uh, um, also online uh, opportunities and working uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the cloud using uh, shared documents. So that's, that was kind of the, the way to manage the challenge of in frequent meetings and uh, everything was recorded so we could then go back to what we did last time and go work from that. Uh, uh, people found it particularly um, helpful to have to see what was already done. So, mm -hmm. you know, a few mm -hmm. months on, people could go back and see, oh, this is how many things we ticked off. Ah, you know, cool, it's amazing. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. it really was a good motivation. Um, mm -hmm. um, and did you find any particularly useful kind of design tools? You mentioned kind of going out framework mm -hmm. a little bit. Maybe you could expand on that a little bit or talk mm -hmm. about some of the other 
design tools you used or methodologies? Yeah, so uh, in regards of designing the land, um, we, we uh, it it wasn't anything um, um, out of the ordinary uh, more than we learned at the course, uh, mm-hmm. which prepared us ve- prepared me very well. And I wanted to share the ideas in practice with my colleagues who haven't gone through the course. So at the stage of surveying, um, we've um, um, used the observation, uh, looking at uh, to, you know maps and topographical data, of, mm-hmm. uh, surveying the plot, walking around the plot, uh, observing the sun, all, all kind of fairly... Um, standard approaches in, in surveying, mm-hmm. um, um, but uh, uh, where, where the kind of coaching methodology was coming in, it was um, more on the side of uh, the, um, designing the organization and why we're actually doing the plot. Um, so asking people what's their motivations in the first place, what are the goals, mm-hmm. how will they know they've reached the goals, mm-hmm. and and so that everyone would be fired up to reach their goal, but the goals would be united in mm-hmm. in, in the form of the uh, plot. Mm-hmm. And in terms of the implementation, um, yes, yeah, so or who, who was kind of involved around the implementation? And maybe you talk a little bit about time scale as well of implementation. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking, um, we've, we've taken on the plot uh, um, in, uh, in the spring, um, mm-hmm. so um, and the, the first people involved were the trustees, um, the future trustees of the organization and uh, um, our friends and families, um, mm-hmm. uh, friends of friends, um, because we wanted to see how we, we are going to work together and gel together. We didn't really publicize it and do a big community engagement uh, um, uh, campaign, um, mm. because um, that might bring in positive energies or distracting, destructive or distracting energies mm-hmm. and first of all I, I, I hoped and we hoped that we could uh, learn to see how we work together on something which is ongoing because before mm-hmm. we, we would put on events uh, which were uh, fairly successful, we would enjoy each other's company, network a lot, support mm-hmm. other groups but this was our first ongoing commitment uh, with uh, potential money involved and equipment and other people so Mm-hmm. We wanted to grow it uh, slowly. Uh, Sounds very much like the um, David Holmgren's uh, use small and slow solutions principle kind of in action there. Um, yeah, so kind of a bit of a reflective, more reflective question now. Um, would you feel that you kind of met your initial outcomes mm-hmm. and aims? I think so. I mean, we review the goals um, um, at the AGM. Um, mm-hmm. So, so... Um, because we, as like I said, we record what people say they want to be their goals. Um, someone would say that they want to involve more people in food growing. Someone else says they want to produce more food. Someone else mm-hmm. says they want to have a positive impact on the environment. Mm-hmm. And and the plot allows each of them to express that um, in a unique way. And and they know they've achieved it because they set the goal. In a, for example, we've involved 15 new people in food growing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, people say um, they've. Um, uh, produced, you know, 20 kilograms of <laughs> rhubarb or potatoes, and then they can check back and say, "Oh, if this is what I set myself. Uh-huh. These are the steps I had to take. You know, these are the weekends I spent there. These are the events I did. This is what I've learned to achieve this goal." And then at the AGM, we would review it, go back. Um, so, so um, and that's that's how we kind of set the goals and then check against them. Um, on, on the on the plot, um, I've uh, put up a, like a totem pole with uh, boards mm-hmm. uh, with the goals written up on them, mm-hmm. and we record the goals every every time we're there. So when people cool. can, new people come in, they can sign the board, and then we have like a live um, 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 uh, evidence of that goal being reached. You know, when we weigh our potatoes or uh, you know onions or something, we mm-hmm. put that on that board. Yeah. And again, anyone who comes in can see it and, uh, so that's that's how we know we've kind of reached our goals um could you tell us a little bit about the um permaculture design course that you undertook um, mm-hmm. yeah i mean uh, i think it was uh, 2011 or 12 um, so quite a few years ago but uh, um, i enjoyed it it's it, uh, in itself uh, uh, with with uh, your tutoring uh, the uh, people there and uh, the the things we've learned uh, but i found Kind of like getting flashbacks from it uh, over time, <laughs> and not, not in a bad way, mm-hmm. uh, but just uh, when I was approaching projects or ideas, I, uh, they gave me a lot of uh, um, uh, mental tools uh, and practical tools to to deal with design. I think it helped mm-hmm. helped me um, uh, see that I'm a creative person, not necessarily in an artistic way, uh, which mm-hmm. you don't normally think in, in paintings and music, but I'm very creative in regards of 
creating structures and projects and, and having the design thinking uh, tools uh, from the uh, permaculture course um, really enhanced uh, my, my existing uh, skill set and uh, I felt much more confident mm -hmm. uh, in approaching things. And I've used it yeah, when designing my allotment, I use it now when I think about uh, some, some personal uh, projects, um, I use that work, uh, not explicitly, but when, when I'm tasked with a, with a new uh, challenge, I always think, okay, the framework, SADIM, and, and uh, I just take, take the, the bigger framework and then apply principles or I come up with tools or research tools, but I always keep mm -hmm. the overview of the framework in mind. And that, that all you know, started with first an introductory course, which mm -hmm. was good in itself, but the, the full permaculture course really I think helped me and, and the group uh, get really inspired and convinced uh, it's, it's uh, an excellent tool which everyone should have a chance to um, experience. Um, so, um, uh, still with me. Yeah. And my last question is, do you feel your project is of like wider value to the community or of value to the wider community rather? Yes, I mean there is, there is a lot of uh, uh, bonding social capital being created within uh, the community of uh, people interested in transition and uh, the wider uh, uh, community uh, uh, action and sustainable change. Uh, mm -hmm. But what we're having also now at this stage is, is members from outside of our usual networks. Uh, mm -hmm. um, we advertise through uh, different uh, um, uh, channels and uh, it's nice to have people, uh, new people which we don't know coming in. Uh, right. that, that I think that's the next big stage and the real change uh, taking mm -hmm. place. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your time.